So now you can go ahead and finish the one single crochet into three stitches and then your decrease stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you can go ahead and move your yarn marker up and make one single crochet into two stitches and then your decrease stitch all the way around. Then one single crochet in one stitch and then your decrease stitch, repeating the pattern all the way around. Then you can see how you're almost closed, so you can go ahead and just make your decrease stitches all the way around until you're almost closed, and then come back. Then when you're almost closed, you can go ahead and slip stitch everything closed. And what you're going to do is just skip a stitch, go into the next stitch over, and then just yarn over. Turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for slip stitch. And keep repeating that around until you're completely closed. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then just take your tapestry needle and just go right in where you finished off. And then I just go a couple of different directions and then go ahead and trim the loose yarn end. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the head is a little bit narrow. Don't overstuff the head. Just stuff it enough to where the head is still a little bit narrow. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle and the long end that you left for sewing or you can get the same colored yarn onto the tapestry needle. For me, I want to get the same colored yarn onto my tapestry needle and use this for when I get to the back of the head. Because the first thing that you're going to want to do is sew the front of the head onto the body. So you're going to line up the front of the head onto the body and make sure you have the paws facing the right direction. You want to line up the head, the front of the head, onto the front of the body and make sure that the nose stays straight as you're sewing the head on the body. Also the pipsqueak, I'm going to call it the beard, the pipsqueak beard, keep that out of the way. The only thing that you're sewing in place is the front portion of the head of the body, head to the body. What I did was I turned the head upside down and then put the body on top of the head and then I lined up the head with the edge of the body, kept the nose straight, and then just sewed the front first. Now for the first time, the main thing that you're doing, so now I've already sewn the front, now I'm going around the side, and don't worry if you don't get it fully sewn down yet, because you're going to make several passes around to make sure that the head is nice and secure. When I reach the back part of it, of the head, I'm going to create a fold, about a half inch fold, and then that's what I'm going to be sewing down. And then if I come out on the head, I'm going to go back in, about a stitch over on the head, go down into the body, and then up through the head again. So here I'm coming up through the fold that I'm making in the back of the head, and if you need to make a larger fold or double fold, whatever you need to do to keep the head looking straight, you can fold it again. And then I'm going about a stitch over on the head and then back down and the, about a stitch over and then go down into the body and then back up through the head on the fold with my tapestry needle. And I'm going to do this all the way around. And then, once I have the head secure, 
then you can come back around and make sure that you have the head stitched on really well. And then the whole time you also want to make sure that the head is still looking straight. So for mine, I just want to show you where I sewed the front of the head. So here is where I closed and it's about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 rows up and it's perfectly lined flush with the front of the body and the nose is straight. So now once you're happy with how the head looks on your dog and the dog is looking straight ahead you're ready to sew the ears on and then you're also going to sew down the pipsqueak portion. So you're just going to take your tapestry needle and the pipsqueak yarn and you're just going to kind of fold the yarn in the pipsqueak yarn in and form the head and neck and sew that triangular portion to the front of the body. So you can see how I'm just taking and sewing along the edge of the pipsqueak yarn. Make sure it pulls through okay. Yeah, there it goes. And then you just finish sewing the soft furry por portion in place. And I just sewed mine all along the edge, just going in and out of the body and the pipsqueak yarn. And then you just bury the loose yarn in, just like you did with the regular yarn. So for my ears, I used my white yarn to sew the front part on first. I tucked all of my loose yarn ends in the inside of the ear except for the long end that I left for sewing for the back. Now the first thing I want to do with the ear is line it up on the top of the head. Sometimes you can line the, the ear up with the magic circle on top of the head like on my black Siberian Husky but with this carrot colored yarn it's a little bit thicker so I'm going, it's going to be a couple of rows closer towards the front. So you want about two inches from the top of the white part to where the ear starts. You also want to make sure that the ear is pointed because the Siberian Husky has pointy ears. So what I did is I sewed the front part down first and then I folded the side in the way I wanted to make the point on the Head. and I use my eyes to help line it up to for the ends of the ear. Then when I got the point the way I wanted on the ear after sewing the front portion of the ear down then I'm ready to sew the back orange portion. So you can see how I'm taking and shaping the back of the ear still maintaining the point of the ear but then just sewing right along the back of the orange portion. And this is what she looks like so far. You can see how I got her ears to be uh, nice and pointy, standing straight up. And then this is what it looks like from behind, the back of the ears. And you can use the magic circle as a landmark when you're sewing your ears on. And I just wanted to put the black Siberian Husky next to the carrot colored one. And you can see that with the carrot colored yarn, the head is slightly larger. And then here is the placement of the big twist yarn using the magic circle as a landmark. Here's a top view. Now we're going to take the pipsqueak yarn and we're going to use this for the underbelly of the dog. So the first thing you're going to do is just take the pipsqueak yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop. I'm using my 9mm crochet hook. You go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb, yarn over, 
Turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and the loop around your hook a little bit loosely. You want to be able to move the hook easily through the loop. Go ahead and make a chain of 11. Two, three, four, five. So go ahead, finish a chain of 11 or whatever width that you want for the fur to go under the belly of the dog. After you finish your chain of 11, then you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch across, and you're going to have a stitch count of 10 for this row. So one single crochet in every stitch back across for a stitch count of 10. Then when you finish your last single crochet, go ahead and chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch, and then every stitch across. And go ahead and keep track of the count. You don't have to keep a perfect count because if you do have a little bit of a crooked piece of work, it just adds to the uniqueness of your dog. This is just to make the underbelly of the dog soft and furry. So again, you're going to have a stitch count of 10 each time. So you're going to chain one and then one single crochet in every stitch across. And you should have a, a count, stitch count of 10 each time. And then you just finish making the length that you want for under the belly of your dog. And part of this is going to go up the front of the dog as well. So here's my finished part for the underbelly of the dog. And instead of giving you rows for finishing, I'm going to give you a measurement. Or you can just take and measure it, measure it under your dog to make sure that it's the right size. So mine measures approximately 14 and a half inches. And then the width is about four and a half inches. And as I was making my rows, as I told you before, sometimes it might get narrower and narrower. And then what I did, since it, sometimes you can even keep it straight if you keep your stitch count properly, but for me, I was just crocheting because I, this is just the decoration for the underbelly, soft part, so I wasn't really too concerned. And if it did get narrower, I was actually, I actually wanted that because then, I can just add a couple more stitches on each side and then open it up again. So you can do whatever you want for your design for the underbelly. So this narrowing hourglass portion is what I'm going to put in the front of the dog. And then the rest of it will go under the underbelly towards the back of the dog. And I'm just going to take the long end that I left for sewing. If you didn't leave a long end, you can, as you're sewing, just tuck that small loose yarn in underneath and then you can sew it in place. Now when I finished I didn't show you where I finished off and then just cut a long loose yarn end because you already know how to finish off. So after you finish your last single crochet you can just finish off and then leave a long loose yarn end for sewing. So now I'm just taking the hourglass portion of my pipsqueak yarn and I'm just centering it on the front of the dog and getting ready to sew with my tapestry needle. And I just take the tapestry needle and then just go in to the body and then come back up through the pipsqueak portion sewing it in place. And I just do that all around the edge of the pipsqueak yarn. This is what mine looks like underneath and then towards the front of the body. It's really soft. And again, I just sewed right along the edge all the way around. Now I'm going to show you how to make the tail for your dog. So go ahead and get the same colored yarn as the main color for your dog. Then you're going to take and fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, and I'm using my 4mm crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, 
Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain. I'm just going to show you four of them, but you're going to make a chain of 11. So yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one chain, two, three, and four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 11, and then come back. After you finish your chain of 11, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across, which will give you a stitch count of 10 after this row. So one single crochet in every stitch back across. Then, after you finish your last single crochet, go ahead and chain one, and then turn your work. That first chain one counts as your first stitch for the row, and then make a single crochet in every stitch back across. Now for the tail, you do want to make sure that you maintain your stitch count, so if you chain one, and then make one single crochet, in every stitch back across, you should end up with a stitch count of 10. If you don't, then you missed a stitch or did something wrong. So if you don't want a crooked tail, make sure that you maintain your stitch count of 10. So not counting that first chain, I just finished my second row of a stitch count of 10. So now I'm going to go ahead and chain one, turn my work, and then make a single crochet into the next stitch over. And you're going to keep repeating this until you've completed 40 rows. So 40 rows of one single crochet in every stitch. And also, before you turn, make sure you make your chain one to maintain your stitch count. And by the time you're finished with your 40 rows, you should have straight edges on both sides. So I just finished my 40 rows, and you can see how I have a straight edge on both sides. And mine measures almost 10 inches. This is the size that I had for the Siberian Husky, but for my carrot colored dog, I'm going to make her tail a little bit longer. For her, I'm going to go ahead and continue until I reach 14 inches for her tail. So for my carrot colored Siberian Husky, I made 59 rows for the tail. Again, the Siberian Husky only had 40, so the black, I mean the black Siberian Husky only had 40. So he had a little bit of a shorter tail. I'm making hers a little bit longer. Then when you're finished, Go ahead and finish off. And again, her tail measures 14 inches. Actually, just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then, we're going to go ahead and get the pipsqueak yarn. This is how much I have left so far. And we're going to finish the other side of the tail. So for the pipsqueak yarn, you're going to start it the same way, except I'm using my 9mm crochet hook. So I'm making my slip knot, and then I'm going to make a chain of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. After you finish your chain of six, you're going to chain, you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. And you can actually feel it right there. Go into that second chain, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And then you're going to make a single crochet in every stitch back across, which will give you a stitch count of five. And then my last one. Then you're just going to chain one. 
and you're going to try your best to maintain a stitch count of five. So chain one, turn your work, you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, that will be your second stitch, next stitch over, for three, four, Since I have that last stitch there, I'm going to go ahead and even up the side so I maintain the straight edges and then chain one, turn my work, go into the next stitch over for my second, third, fifth, and then I'm going to go ahead and maintain, looks like I'm going to maintain a six. So if that happens to you, you can maintain the stitch count. You just want to keep the edges straight. I might have gone in, instead of going into the next stitch over, I might have maintained the same. So whatever stitch count that you start with is the one that you should maintain. So here's the second, third, so you're going to go ahead and keep continuing to make your pipsqueak portion of the tail maintaining the stitch count. So as you can see, I'm actually maintaining a stitch count of six. As long as you maintain a stitch count of six or five and don't make it too big because it needs to fit on the other side of the tail. So we're going to be crocheting the edges together when we're finished. So go ahead keep chaining one and making a single crochet in every stitch across and then when you reach the size the same size as your other piece come back and I'll show you what to do next so I finished the pip squeak portion you can see how I maintained my straight edges and then it fits right over the other piece of the tail so now what we're going to do is take your four millimeter crochet hook and we're going to place the pipsqueak yarn portion right on top of the regular yarn portion and I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot with the two lo loose yarn ends and we're going to get ready to crochet these two pieces together So we're going to leave this end open so we can tuck this under into the inside. Then go ahead and bring your crochet hook through both pieces, the stitch on both pieces, and you're going to bring up a loop with your orange colored or whatever main color yarn you have for your dog. and then go ahead and tie a knot and then chain two one two that counts as your first half double crochet and we're going to make a half double crochet in every stitch around so you yarn over go into the next next stitch over and grab both pieces. We're crocheting both pieces of the tail together. Bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through all three loops for a half double crochet. And you're going to make one half double crochet all the way down the side of the tail, crocheting the two pieces together. When you reach the end, come back and I'll show you what to do next. I just wanted to point out also that you're not able to see the stitches so you're just kind of evenly spacing 
and you may need to grab one side first and then go through the other side but again you're just evenly spacing the stitches across also you want to make sure that the pipsqueak portion reaches the end of the tail. You don't want it to, as you're crocheting, to be too short. So I just tied the two loose yarn ends into a knot on the end to make sure that it reaches the length and won't be too short when I reach the end. I've reached the end and I went ahead and just tucked any loose yarn ends towards the center. And then in the corner of the tail, I'm just going to place two half double crochet into the same stitch and then turn to the end of the tail and crochet across the top. So on the other corner I'm going to make two half double crochet again into the corner before turning down the opposite side and working on the opposite side. So two half double crochet on each end this is what my tail looks like after going all the way down. Then, after I finish the last stitch, I'm leaving the opening of the bottom of the tail open. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tail onto your dog. I only needed one skein of the pipsqueak yarn and as you can see I have plenty left for decorating the dog. So I'm going to save some of it to decorate the face and I'll show you what I do with that. But I'm going to also use a large amount of this for the loops on the tail because you could finish, this could be your finished tail for your dog if you wanted. But for mine, I want to add the little loops on there, so I'm going to show you how I did that. So I just found the end of the yarn, and I'm going to take and put the end of the yarn on my tapestry needle. And then I'm just going to put the end of the yarn aside for now. And then I'm going to start on the end of the tail. And then I'm going to take and loop the yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the other end closest to the yarn. And then I'm going to go ahead and start looping. So I'm going to go across the end of the tail and just make some loops. About two inches you can make your loops as long as you want, but mine are approximately two inches. I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot to one strand of the loop. And then I'm just going to keep looping all across the end of the tail, making each loop the same size as the previous loop. Then, when I reach the end, I'm just going to fold those loops over and then I'm going to continue looping. Not, don't go through to the opposite side of the tail. You only want to use the pipsqueak portion. Just grab a stitch and then continue looping. About the same size. And then I just made my last loop, so I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot with that last piece. And then I'm going to get more yarn. And then I'm just going to continue decorating the end of the tail as far as I want. I may not go all the way down. I may just use you know, the front part, but I'll show you when I'm finished how much I put. So you can see how my tail is looking so far. It's looking really pretty and fluffy on the end and I'm going to continue putting some more on mine. So you can see how if you really have a tough time crocheting with the pipsqueak yarn you could use the regular white colored yarn here and then just make loops of pipsqueak 
on the end. So there are a lot of different ways that you can make your dog. So for mine, I just put loops on about half of the end of the tail. I still have a lot of my pipsqueak yarn left over, so I may end up putting some more on there later. So now you can take and place a little bit of stuffing inside the tail. When you put the stuffing, make sure that you don't overstuff it because you want the tail to curve over and then you have the fluffy portion curve over the back of your dog. So when you're sewing your tail on the dog, you want to have the white portion facing you because that's the part that's going to curve over the back of the dog. And then you're just going to center the tail. You're going to sew with the white pipsqueak yarn or whatever white colored yarn that you used to sew the white portion and then you sew the main color of the yarn for the other portion of the dog. So make sure your tail is centered. So for my tail I centered it with the magic circle about 12 rounds up and this is what her tail looks like after I finished sewing it in place. Now this part is optional. You can take your pipsqueak yarn on your tapestry needle and any white portion yarn that you used with the white yarn you can take your pipsqueak yarn and you can take and make a little decoration with the fuzzy yarn so make sure you leave enough of the yarn for tying a knot and burying into your work and then you just kind of make a stitch and you can put as much or as little as you want so you could see how I just just like I did for the center strip I just made little stitches wherever I want it to be fuzzy and also the same thing for in the ear this is a close-up of the one eye that I finished and then the difference you can see the difference between the eye that I made with pipsqueak and then the one that I left empty so I finished decorating both of the eyes and then also you could see how I put a little bit on the inside of the ears and I still have plenty of pipsqueak yarn left over now you could put your favorite collars in place. You can make them or you could buy them, whatever you want your preference is. I have a separate video tutorial that shows how to make dog collars. I also like to make little name tags for my dogs because there's so much work that goes into them. It's kind of fun to put a little name tag. You can also put a little pet outfit on your dog. I like to buy the ones that are really soft and fuzzy and this one has a, an adorable little bow on it and it also has a zipper that goes up the back. The size is medium but you could get away with a large if you wanted to and this is by Bond Company. This is what she looks like with her pet outfit on. You can see that it fits her perfectly. And then her dog collar. You can also flip her tail up and over. These are the two dogs together. So you can see Balto and then this is Jenna. So Jenna, because I used the red heart yarn for her, she came out a little bit larger. I actually prefer the Big Twist yarn size, but if you like the color with the Red Heart, you can make the head, instead of increasing all the way to the size I made for Balto, you can make one less increased size for the head for Jenna. Also, I prefer the method that I used for Balto, just using the yarn to sew the legs on as opposed to using the doll joints, but it'll be a preference for you to decide which method you like best. 
I just think that the arms are more loose with the doll joints compared to with using just regular yarn to sew the legs on. Here is a look at the tail. So you can see Balto's tail compared to Jenna's tail. So again, Balto, I made his tail a little bit shorter than I did for Jenna. And then also the other difference between the tails is I crocheted the two pieces together with pipsqueak yarn for Balto's tail. And then I used the same colored yarn as the dog for Jenna's tail. Now the other thing you can do is you can crochet little bows for your dog or a little flower for the top of your dog's head. I found these 50% off. This is Hildy and Joe, two hairpins. So I'm going to use these. These fit perfectly onto the crochet dog and they're easily removable so you can actually wear them as well. I also found this little bracelet that will be pretty on the dog's paw. It's also by Hildy and Joe. It fits right onto the dog's paw and I'm also going to show you how to make the little painted fingernails too for your dog's paw. The little clip will fit easily through the crochet work. So you can just lift up the top and just kind of put it right through on the crochet dog. Or it can go right up the ear too. Now I'm going to show you how to make the little fingernails if you want for your crochet dog. So you're just going to take the whatever color yarn you want for the fingernail and put it right onto your tapestry needle. Then you're going to start towards the bottom. You're going to decide where the, the middle is first. So my middle is going to be right here. So I'm going to go to the side and come up with my tapestry needle. Make sure that you leave enough of a loose yarn end for burying into your work. Then you're going to go right back in where you first went in and then come out right in the center of the paw. Then you have one side finished. Then you're going to go straight down at the same level as where you first went in. And then you're going to angle up and between this first, first one we made and the second is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So about eight stitches over. You're going to come out and then for the bottom you have about one, two, three stitches between. So you're going to go out, you're going to go back in at the same level, about three stitches over and then come out where you first started. So exactly in the same spot where you first started. Then you can go ahead and tie a knot. And then we're going to bury our loose yarn in. Just take the loose yarn end. You're going to go right in where you tied your knot and then come out through the back. And then you can go ahead and trim the loose yarn ends. And then you have your pretty 
pause, and you can go up further if you want. I just wanted to make mine a little bit shorter. On one of my dogs, I'm going to be showing how to use doll joints for the legs. And then the other one, I'm just going to use the standard way that I usually do. So I'll show you both ways, and you can decide if you like these doll joints or not. But the ones that I used are from Treehouse Studio, doll accessory, doll joints, and the size is 20 millimeter. Now you only get two sets. So for the front legs, you'll need one package, and for the back legs, you'll need another package. Now before closing, you're going to decide if you want to use your doll joints for the legs or not at this point. So now I've finished 35 rounds total. And if you're using the doll joint, this is where you're going to set this down for now because we need to make the little square that goes in the inside to make the doll joint. So this is the square that I'm going to show you how to make and what it does is it just holds the doll joint on the inside. And then I will show you why it's important to have this little piece. So I used my orange colored yarn but no one's going to see this on the inside of the leg, so you could use your white yarn if you wanted to. But what you're going to do is just fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop, and I used my 4 millimeter crochet hook. Just hold the base with your middle finger and thumb, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, nine, ten. After you have your chain of ten, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So you're going to bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across, which will give you a stitch count of nine. Then when you reach the end, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to go into the next stitch over for your single crochet, and then you're just going to return back across, making one single crochet in every stitch back across, and you're still going to maintain the stitch count of nine. Then you're going to chain one and turn your work. And you're going to keep repeating this until for three more times of one single crochet in every stitch across for a stitch count of nine. So three more times and then come back. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew this onto the leg. Now once we sew this to the leg, this is going to be going on the inside of the leg, but you want it to go about the level that you want the leg to be on the body. So that means that half is going to be the orange colored and half the white color if you did um, the same color change as me. So it depends on your color change, and the reason why I'm saying that is because whatever level that you want, if some of it falls into the white portion, then that means that you're going to have to sew with the white portion so you don't see it, and then the orange portion so you don't see it. So I have used the doll joint before where I just placed it right on the inside. The paw was facing forward, so you can see how I would have put the joint through and then put the joint on the body but I found that the leg looked bulky when I did that so the reason why I'm making this square so I'm going to go ahead and place the doll joint through the square and you just want to place it so that the doll joint is completely surrounded 
you're going to place the doll joint so it's completely surrounded by the square and then what you're going to do is you got to make sure that your foot is facing the direction forward and then you would place the doll joint so that the round circular portion is facing towards the outside of the leg and what that will do once you sew it in place I'll show you we'll go ahead and sew it in place so what you're going to do is just take and sew around the rectangle or square on the inside on the inside of the leg towards the outside portion of the leg so you're going to use orange colored yarn for the orange area and then white colored yarn for the white area so you can't see the sew, the, where you sewed it from the outside of the leg and then this is how your doll joint should look make sure you have it lined up properly so the leg is facing forward and then the doll joint peg is showing on the inside now make sure that before you sew it down that you have it facing so that the leg is not crooked and then you can see how I just kind of sewed the little square in place on the inside with my tapestry needle and the same colored yarn I was actually able to sew mine in place with just the orange colored yarn be careful when making your stitches mine were a little bit large I may go a little bit smaller on my next leg but you can't really tell unless you point it out but just be careful when you're making the stitches that it's difficult to see as you're sewing the little square on the inside make sure that you trim your loose yarn ends on the inside of the leg because you may be able to see the loose yarn end strand color as you're stuffing the craft stuffing into the leg so go ahead and trim your loose yarn ends on the inside and stuff the leg now when you get the stuffing up to the doll joint go ahead and bring the doll joint through the opposite side and then you can go ahead and finish stuffing the leg making sure that you hold the doll joint on the opposite side okay so now that you have the stuffing in the top you still will keep the loop out of the way we're going to finish closing after we finish putting the leg onto the body because if you try to do it before you do that that you may lose your doll joint back towards the inside so make sure that you have it stuffed the way that you want and you can always stuff it more later when you're ready to close then you're going to hold that doll joint and then you're going to go into the body and sometimes it might be helpful to use a yarn marker where you want to put the legs on the body so once you've marked where you want to place your legs so here I'm just going to show you from the back side I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty and then to the other side in the front I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three 24 to 5 to 6, 7, 28. So that's the length that I have for mine. And then I'd make sure that you have it level so one leg's not down or up compared to the front leg. And then make sure that you go around the same row or round for the opposite side and then the same distance. And then once you have everything marked the way you want, where your legs are going to be then you can take some of the stuffing out 
make sure you don't lose your yarn markers, but go ahead and remove some of the stuffing. Then you're ready to remove the yarn marker and place the safety latch on the inside. Just line up with the yarn marker. Make sure you have it in place. I go, I went right below my yarn marker and then I grabbed the joint, the doll joint on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and remove the yarn marker and then I'm going to place my safety latch on the inside. So my safety latch is on the inside. You can see how the leg will turn. Make sure that you have the paw facing the direction that you want. So where I'm closing is going to be the front of the dog. And then the leg will turn. And the reason why I like using this method as opposed to putting the doll joint on this side instead of the opposite side like we did is because you get this nice little dimple for the leg. So to me it just looks better that way, but you can play with it and see if you like the other method more. But like I said, I didn't like the bulky look of the leg when I used the other method. So I prefer this method. It makes a nice little dimple for the leg and then the leg moves nicely. Now we're ready to close the leg. So on the inside, I have the doll joint safety latch. Let me just show a picture of what it looks like. So on the inside you can see where I placed the doll joint on the inside. Now the package actually comes with four. One of them is the um, washer type but I didn't use that. But you can use that too. You would use the washer on the stem portion in the square if you wanted, but I didn't feel a need to use that, so I just left it off. So now you can return to the outside of the leg. Just place your yarn marker where you left off, and you're going to make your decrease round. So for the first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches, and then make your decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then I'm back to the yarn marker and I had two stitches remaining I just placed a single crochet into each of those remaining stitches then I'm going to move my yarn marker up and for the next decrease round I'm making one single crochet into two stitches and then I'm making my decrease stitch. And then I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you're going to make one single crochet and then your decrease stitch repeating that pattern all the way around. You can see how it's starting to close and you can add more stuffing if you need to. Then I have my two remaining stitches and what I'm going to do since I'm almost closed, I'm just going to remove the yarn marker and I'm just going to start making decrease stitches until I'm almost closed. Then you can go ahead and skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, and then just start slip stitching closed. And then once it's completely closed, you can go ahead and finish off. So I'm going to go ahead and keep closing. I have about a couple more stitches before it's completely closed. This is my last one. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you can see how the leg looks really nice and secure. Then you just take your tapestry needle 
put it onto that loose yarn end, go back through, come out anywhere, and then I usually do a second pass, about a stitch over, and then come back up. Then you can go ahead and just trim the loose yarn end, and it's buried. And then all of the legs are made the exact same way with the doll joints. So this is what my work looks like so far after putting all of the joints in place. And you can see how all of the paws are facing forward like they should be. I had a scare at one point because I actually put the back paw on backwards. And I had already latched it, so that was not a good feeling. But I was able to, believe it or not, get the latch off. I don't know how I did that. So again, I can't stress enough, make sure that your paw is facing forward in the direction that you want because I don't know if you'll be able to get the latch off like I did. And then remember the body is slightly larger too because we use the doll joints for the arms or the paws for the carrot colored versus the yarn to hold the legs on on the black Siberian Husky.